Welcome to another edition of Subaru Service Bulletin Live. This issue of Service Bulletin Live covers some of the service instructions for the rear suspension corrosion campaign, campaign code WZU41, complete service instructions, as well as other details regarding applicable models, parts information, flat rate operations and times, and claim processing information can be found in the product campaign bulletin for the WZU41 campaign. Due to the number of repair options associated with this campaign, not all equipment or procedures will be utilized on a particular vehicle. It is therefore extremely important to familiarize yourself with all procedures outlined in the campaign bulletin. Once the inspection process is completed, choose the procedure that best fits the particular vehicle on which you are working. Refer to the flow chart in the campaign bulletin. Every vehicle brought in for this campaign will require a visual inspection and, depending on the results, an impact punch test. Results of these tests will determine the extent of rust-proof treatment necessary and if any component replacement is needed. In general, vehicles passing the visual and impact punch test in all areas will require only the rust-proof treatment. Vehicles exhibiting visual perforation or penetration as the result of the impact punch test on one or both inner arms only will be repaired by replacing the affected arm or arms and rust proofing the remaining components. Should a cross member fail either the visual or impact punch test, the rear suspension subassembly will need to be replaced. The purpose of this film is to familiarize technicians with the visual inspection, impact punch test, and the rust proof treatment process. These will be the most commonly used procedures for this campaign. For component replacement, refer to the applicable Subaru service manual. Before we get started, let's cover shop supply tools and equipment, campaign supply tools, and the rust-proof treatment materials. Refer to the shop supply tool list in the campaign bulletin, depending on the results of your inspections and tests. The tools and equipment listed, which are commonly available in an automotive repair facility, may be necessary. As with any repair, be sure all tools are available and in good condition prior to beginning any work. The following additional materials may also be necessary in most cases to complete this campaign. The Subaru Punch Tester. The Spray Gun with L-Shape Wand. Anti-Rust Oil. Anti-Rust Wax. Sealant. And Sealing Plugs. To ensure the best possible view of all components, remove both rear wheels, making sure to mark both wheels' original position on the vehicle. Wearing protective goggles and a mask, visually inspect all surfaces of the control arms and crossmember for any perforation, paying special attention to the upper areas of each component. It will be necessary to use a flex head mirror to properly view the upper surfaces. On the vehicle we are inspecting in this film, no perforation has been noted. At this point, we will proceed with the punch test. If perforation was observed on one or both arms only, the remaining components would need to be punch tested. If perforation was observed on the cross member, the rear suspension subassembly would be replaced. Refer back to the flow chart in the campaign bulletin for the proper sequence to follow. On the back side of each control arm, measure in approximately 100 millimeters from the arm's innermost mounting point and put a mark. Clean this area and mark it again. Repeat this procedure on the underside of the arm in a location approximately center between the outermost end of the arm and the shock mounting location. Now, looking at the underside of the cross member, measure in approximately 100 millimeters from the inside of the cross member mounting bracket. Put a mark at the bottom center at this location. Measuring from this point, Mark a location 30 millimeters towards the rear of the vehicle and 40 millimeters towards the front.
Repeat these same four measurements on the opposite side of the vehicle. Once all eight locations have been marked, you are ready to punch test each location. Before using the impact punch tester, become familiar with its operation and precautions concerning the use of the tester. The punch tester is operated by engaging a lock pin with the trigger pipe and loading the punching tip by pulling back on the trigger pipe and engaging the position setting groove. The loaded tester is under extreme spring tension and should never be released into the open air or against any surface other than its original intended purpose. Never leave the tester in a loaded or charged position. This is dangerous from a safety standpoint and will result in spring fatigue over time. When releasing the tester, be sure the punching tip is held firmly and exactly perpendicular to the surface to be punched. This will ensure accurate testing. Keeping in mind these precautions, punch test each location. Determine if the punch tester penetrated any test points by inserting a standard size paper clip or similar size steel wire into each punched point. If the wire does not penetrate any test point, proceed with the rust proofing procedure. If the wire has penetrated any point, proceed with component replacement and or rust proofing according to the flow chart and other instructions found in the product campaign bulletin. Please note that all replacement components are already treated. It is only necessary to rust proof the remaining original components. To apply the rust proof treatment, it is necessary to mark and drill an additional three locations on each side. We'll call these positions A, B, and C. Position A can be located by measuring on the back side of the control arm, 50 millimeters towards the inside of the arm, away from the shock mounting bracket, and 50 millimeters up from the bottom edge of the arm. Mark that location. Position B is located on the bottom of the arm, 30 millimeters from the outermost end of the arm, and 10 millimeters from the rear corner. Mark this location. Position C is on the cross member. In the center of the cross member mounting bracket, Mark a location which is approximately 45 degrees from the bottom center towards the front of the car. Measure and mark these same three locations on the other side of the vehicle. Wearing goggles and a mask, center punch all six locations. Using a 4 mm drill bit, carefully drill all six locations. When drilling, be careful not to drill the opposite insides of the arms or into the torsion bar located inside the cross member. Changing to a 10 mm drill bit, widen point C on the cross member and points A only on the arms. File off any burrs caused by drilling. Apply sealant to the open gaps on the inside ends of the arms. Also apply sealant on the outermost upper ends of the arms. Do not seal up the openings on the outside lower portion of the arms. Any gaps here and the holes previously drilled in locations B will serve as drain holes. Cover the back sides of the brake assemblies to protect the brake parts from seepage of the rust proof oil. 
Place pans on the floor under the openings serving as drain holes. Adhering to any safety precautions on the label, fill the spray gun tank with rust proof oil. Connect the L-shaped wand, airline, and adjust the pressure regulator to 85 PSI. Test the sprayer by spraying in a pan first. It is only necessary to spray rust proof oil on the insides of the arm and cross member. Pulling the trigger of the spray gun completely, spray oil inside each arm for approximately five seconds. It will be necessary to move the spray wand in a circular up and down motion to ensure complete coverage. Repeat the procedure on the cross member. Insert the wand so it is above the torsion bar and just below the inside top of the cross member tube. Spray for approximately eight seconds towards the middle and two seconds towards the outside on each side of the cross member. Return any remaining oil to the original container and store it in a safe place for the next treatment. Clean out the spray gun and nozzle. Then fill the tank with rust proof wax. Adhering to the same precautions as the oil, spray rust proof wax inside each arm for approximately 45 seconds. and inside each side of the cross member for approximately 60 to 90 seconds. Please note that spraying times will vary depending on ambient temperature and previous experience using the spray gun. Before spraying the outside surfaces, it will be necessary to fit the 10 millimeter holes drilled in positions A and C previously with plug kits. Should the plug kit turn while tightening the screw, Hold the plug with pliers. Fill the holes drawn in locations B on the underside of the arms with sealant. Now spray all outside surfaces of the arms and cross member evenly with wax. The rust proofing treatment is now completed. Clean any overspray from all services not included in the treatment process. Clean out the spray gun and nozzle completely. Reinstall the rear wheels in their original positions and torque the wheel nuts to their specified torque. Before we close out this edition of Service Bulletin Live, let's cover some items pertaining to component replacement. Since component replacements do require bleeding of the brake system, always make sure that the brake lines, brake adjusters, and wheel cylinder bleeder screws can be loosened and are serviceable before proceeding with replacement. When these items are found serviceable, the rear brake assemblies are to be reused. If it does become necessary to replace brake linings on one side, both sides must be replaced. However, if a drum needs to be replaced, it is not always necessary to replace both sides. Brake linings are not part of this campaign except as previously outlined. Rear shock absorbers are not part of this campaign. When replacing a rear brake assembly, the new wheel bearings must be packed with grease as these are supplied without the proper amount of grease. Always use new O-rings and locking tabs. In the case of a rear suspension subassembly replacement, no anti-rust treatment is necessary as all components have been treated in the manufacturing process. 
If one or both control arms are replaced, the remaining original components will require the rust-proof treatment process. That completes this edition of Service Bulletin Live.